Today on Daf Chav Beis Amid Beis on the bottom of the Amid, we have a lot to learn today. Let's start right away. We are in a Mishnah. It's the um, second widest line on the page. Chav Beis Amid Beis. Haya Amid Bitfila. A person is in the middle of davening. So we continue with the halachas of a balkari. So this individual is in the middle of davening. Viniska Shuhu Balkari. And he remembers that he's a Balkari. So now he, can't, he doesn't want to continue davening because there's the takana that he shouldn't daven. Lo yafsik, he should not interrupt his davening where he's at. Ele yakatzer, he should shorten. We're talking, of course, about Shemayin Esra. He should shorten the brachas of Shemayin Esra. And then he can, um, he can go to the mikveh after that, if he, if, he, if he needs to, to go to learn Taira. But he shouldn't interrupt his davening right where he is, just shorten the brachas. Yorad Litvail, now a person that's in the mikveh, im yuchan, and it comes the time to read Kiryashma, im yochalalais, if he has time to come out of the mikveh, will be and get dressed, velikrais, and read Kiryashma on time, achalait to heya netzachama, before netzachama will come, when the sun comes up, yale viyiskase viyikra, you should come out of the mikveh, get dressed, and read Kiryashma. Vimlav, if you won't have time to read Kriyashma before Netzach Hama, Yiskasa B'mayim, he should just cover himself, be under the water, not, of course, keep his head above the water, but he should be covered by the water. V'yikra, and read Kriyashma right there in the water, V'lo Yiskasa, read Kriyashma there in the water. Okay, so we see in the Mishnah here, if a person has the opportunity to say Kriyashma by Netzach Hama, that's very important. So even if he's in a mikveh, he should read the Kriyashma in the mikveh. Now the Mishnah clarifies though, he should not cover himself, not with waters that are not fresh, waters that have a, have a smell, and not with water that's used to soak flax in it, that also is not fresh waters. That's one din. As we'll see later in the Gemara, when the Gemara continues, when the Mishnah continues, ad, it's a separate halacha. And the halacha that the Mishnah continues over here is a person that's saying Krishma, and in front of him there's 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 meraglayim, there's urine in front of him. Now the question is, could he say Krishma in the presence of that? Yeah. So the Mishnah continues and says he should not say Krishma at sheyatul etoychan mayim until he dilutes it with water and the, and and, the, and, the, and the enough, as we'll see in the Gemara, in order to be able to say Krishma. Okay, we're going to have all the halachas here in the Gemara. The main thing that we're going to learn about today in the Gemara is regarding davening and regarding tefillin when a person has to use the bathroom. Okay, so for, for the purpose of, of learning all of this Gemara, we're going to talk about whether a person needs the, the bathroom number one or number two. That's the way we'll keep it and that's the way we'll flow along in the Gemara. So you have over here a case where a person has made a glai in front of him and he has to dilute it with water. And the kama yachik mehen uminatsoya, how far does a person have to be if he has in front of him, whether it's, it's urine number one or minatsoya number two, how far does he have to be? Dalad a distance of four amas. As the Gemara will explain exactly what direction that distance will be, should be. Taner Abanon, we learned in Abraise, Hoya Oimid Betfila, a person is in the middle of davening, Viniskashu Balkari, and he remembers that he's a Balkari, Lo Yafsik, he doesn't have to interrupt his davening, Eli Yakatzer, he should shorten the brachas of davening. Hoya Kaira Betaira, how about if he's reading from the Taira? He has an Aliyah, <coughs> and the way it was then in the, the times of the Gemara, every person that got an Aliyah read from the Taira in his Aliyah. Veniska mm-hmm. Balkari, he remembers that he's a Balkari, Eina Mafstik he doesn't stop and say the Bracha and walk away. Ela Magam Gim he reads quickly. As we learned, that's the Pshat that Rashi says, he reads quickly. Mm-hmm. Rav Meir Aimer, Rav Meir says, Eim Balkari a Balkari should not continue reading if he is a, has an Aliyah more than three Psukim, which is the minimum to have an Aliyah for. So therefore he doesn't have to read more than three Psukim and then he has to walk away. Tanya Yedoch, we learned in another Braise, Hoya Oimid Bitfilo, a person is davening, Viroyet Soya Kenegdoi, and he sees where he's davening, that there's Soya, that there's number two there, that he shouldn't be davening in that place. Mahalach Lofanov, he should walk ahead, Achi Yizrekenola Chayrov Dal Damis, and this Soya will be behind him, four Amis, as we said in the Mishnah, four Amis away. But Tanya, so the Gemara asks, but we learned in a different Braise, it's Dodin. That he can walk to the side of it. He doesn't have to walk ahead, but he can even walk to the side if the tzaya is four amas away of him. 
Loy kashe. It's not a question. Hada efshe, hada loy efshe. If if it's possible for him to walk forward, that's better. That the tzayi should be behind him. But if it's not possible, then he can walk towards the side, and he's allowed to daven then as well. Ha yom spalel. How about another case? A person is davening umatzat tzayi bim kaimai, and he finds he discovers that in the place where he was davening, this tzayi right there on the ground where he was davening. And as it's explained in Mepharshim, it's, he davened in a place where, where he should have expected it to be there. He should have noticed that it's there, but he didn't pay attention in advance. And then he's davening and he notices that there's tzaya there on the ground. Omar Rabbe, so Rabbe says, Afal pishachata, although this person has sinned because he's, he's negligent, he sh- it's in a place where he should have expected it to be there and he should have checked the place before. Tfilah say tfilah. Yet his davening is a davening. Maskef Lord of us, Lord of asks on this, how could this be? Vohazevach Rishoim Toyeva, a person that brings a carbon and he's a sinner. This is something that's despicable to Hashem. So, this person that was negligent, he comes to a place, a person goes into a place which is like a bathroom or a place that there are little children and there could be a diaper and whatever, and it's a place that he should have checked to make sure that there's no Toyeva there and he's still in Idavin there. This is Toyeva. How could, how could this Davening be a Davening? El Omarova, so therefore Rova argues and says, since he sinned and he was negligent, even though he davened, his davening is despicable and it's not accepted and he has to daven again. It's Ta'aloch, it's brought in Shulchan Aruch. We learned another halach in Abraise. A person is davening. And in the middle of davening, so of course, anytime we say in the Gemara davening, it refers to Shmai Nesra. <coughs> so he's davening Shmai Nesra, and he can't hold himself back, and he's urinating. So what does he do? He has to stop davening until it stops. And then he returns to his davening. Lehecha on Chayzer to where in his Shmei Nasri does he return to? So there's an argument about this. Rav Chista and Rav Amnuna. Rav Chista and Rav Amnuna argued about this. Chadoma, one opinion was Chayzer Lodosh. He has to go back to the beginning of Shmei Nasra. The Chadoma, another opinion is Lomakim Shapasak. He goes back to the place where he stopped. So the Gemara explains. Leme Bahakam Ifliki. Shall we say that they're arguing in the following case? Masavar, one opinion is. If he had to wait long enough that it would take him to complete the entire Shmai Nasre, that's when he goes back to the beginning of Shmai Nasre. Umar Savar, and the other opinion is, even though he did wait that long, he still goes back only to the place where he stopped. So in a place, in a, if, if he did not wait that long, he could for sure go back to where he stopped. They're only arguing if he waited long enough to f- complete the whole Shmai Nasre. That's the first suggestion of the Gemara. Omer Avashi, so Avashi says, no. Hi, if this is the case, so they should have spelled it out. That they're arguing only because if, whether he waited long enough or did not wait long enough. It didn't say that. El or rather, their argument over here is the Kula Alma. Everybody would agree. If he had to make a break and he waited long enough to finish the whole Shmei Nasra, he has to go back to the beginning of Shmei Nasra. Over here, their argument is when the person had to make a break, but he didn't wait, wait that long. And still, there's an opinion that he has to go back to the beginning of Shmai Nasra. What's the pshat? Masava, the opinion that says that he has to go back to the beginning, holds Gavru Duchuyahu. This person was not fit for davening from the beginning. If he couldn't control himself in the middle of Shmai Nasra, that means that from the beginning he should have went to the bathroom before, and therefore he has to go back to the beginning. Vein Roy, and he wasn't befitting for him for Tadavim, Vein Tfilah say Tfilah. His Tfilah is not a Tfilah from the beginning. Omar Sava, the other opinion says no. Gavre Chaz Yehu, the person is, was able to Davin from the beginning. He, he should have maybe used the bathroom, but until he didn't have to actually use it, and it wasn't a Shaisis al Birkov, he's Roy to Davin. Utfilah say Tfilah, until where he Davin, the Tfilah is a Tfilah, and only from that point where he had to stop will he have to go back to and continue from there. We learned in another b'raise, a person that needs the bathroom, al yispal should not daven. Vimispalel, if he does daven, his tefillah is despicable. This was only said, if he can't wait. If he needs the bathroom, but he could wait, he could wait, then his tefillah is accepted. 
So as we see here from the Lashon of the Gemara, and we'll see this soon again, it doesn't mean that the Chathil, a person should go to Daven if he needs the bathroom. But it's just saying, if it happened, be the Yeved, his Tfilah is a Tfilah. Va'at Kama. How, how much does it, what, what is the shear when we say that if a person can wait, his tefillah is a tefillah? at parsa. If a person can wait, the length to walk a parsa, which in time is about an hour and a quarter. If a person can wait an hour and a quarter, that's, uh, that's uh, something that if he davens, the tefillah is ex- accepted. Others said the exact same din, but the way the version that they had was that it was in the braise itself. The Brais itself continued, <laughs> When is his tefillah not accepted if he can't control himself? If he could control himself, tefillah is If he could wait, and his tefillah is accepted. So this was all in the Brais itself. And then, Va'at Kama, Rav Zvid only commented on the length of time. How much is the length of time that he should be, have to be, that he should be able to wait? At Parsa. The length to go at Parsa, which is, as I said, is an hour and a quarter. One that needs the bathroom, he should not daven. Again, as I said, and this refers even to a person that could control himself. But still, if he knows he needs the bathroom, he should not go and daven. Prepare yourself when you come to speak to Hashem. What's the pshat of this that it says in the Pasik? Guard your feet when you are going to the house of Hashem. So the Gemara is going to explain this part of the Pasik and the continuation of the Pasik as it will be quoted right here. So the first part of the Pasik means as follows. Guard yourself that you should not sin. And if you, if you do sin, have a carbon of I bring a carbon in front of me. That's what it means. Guard your feet, guard your feet not to go and sin. But if you do sin, then come to the house of Hashem to bring a carbon. The Pasik there continues. And it doesn't actually say in the Pasik, but the Karev Lishmaya, you should be close to listen. What does this refer to? What should you listen? Omar Rava. Rav Taish is part of the Pasik. Have a divri chachamim. You should be close to listen to the words of the chachamim. She'im chaitim that if they sin, mevim carbon vaisin shuva. They 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 bring a carbon. And not only do they bring a carbon, but along with the carbon, this shuva. The person does shuva. The Pasik there continues. Mites hagsilim zavach, and do not be from be different than those fools that that bring a carbon. So the Gemara teaches, Al tihik ksilim. Don't be like those fools. Shachaitim umevim carbon. They sin and they bring a carbon. They ain't and tshuva, and they don't do tshuva. All right. As it says regarding a carbon, really the idea of a carbon is is just to be ma'ir the person to tshuva. The Rebbe always brings in the sifas that the car, the word carbon means kiruv, that the person comes closer, mm-hmm. and the carbon that he brings is just to awaken the person that whatever's happening to the carbon should be happening to you. The person has to do tshuva. The pasuk there continues. They do not know what evil is. They don't know of any evil. That's the conclusion of that Pasik. So now the Gemara asks, what, wait a minute, what does this mean? If they don't know of any evil, they are tzaddikim. Why are we calling them fools? So the Gemara goes back and teaches the Pasik differently. It's a continuation to what we said before. Don't be like those fools. They sin and they bring a carbon. Is the carbon they're bringing for a good purpose because they want to thank Hashem? Or they're bringing a carbon because they need a kapata for an aveda that happened? Whether they're bringing it for something negative? So Amar HaKadosh Baruch the Ebush says, Ben Toiv Lara Einam Avchinim. They can't distinguish between good and bad. And they bring a carbon in front of me. What kind of carbon is this? If they don't have the basic awareness of what's good and what's not good, and to have the the, the hiru tshuva, so that, that's not a carbon that's accepted. It's interesting. So you see over here that when it says that there's the tshuva together with the carbon, the basic tshuva is that a person should have at least a recognition of what's ra and what's taiv. And, and, and at least know that and come with that feeling. That's, that's the, the basic tshuva for a carbon. Ravashi, so now the Gemara brings a second interpretation to the beginning of this Pasik in connection to the theme that we're learning about before. Ravashi, when it says, guard your feet when you enter into the house of Hashem, what this refers to is, guard 
what well, if you have to go to you have to use the bathroom the raglecha refers a person having to use the bathroom make sure that you use the bathroom before you come to daven in front of me now here from here and on uh, the gemara is going to discuss the halachas of tefillin may a per, what happens if a person is wearing tefillin and he has to use the bathroom what does he do with his tefillin and now of course as you understand in those times there were no facilities the way we have it today people were going out into the field <coughs> To, to use the bathroom, and therefore, most of the halachas that we're going to learn over here do not apply today. So the Gemara is going to describe what does a person do with his tefillin, is he allowed, does he have to take off his tefillin, and all kinds of halachas regarding this din. Toner Abbanon, it says in the Braise, a person that has to enter into a Beis HaKisei, which is, is out in the field. You should remove his tefillin, a distance of four ames, and he enters into that area. This was only said, a place that was already used as a Beis HaKisei. Kavua doesn't necessarily mean that it's Mamish a permanent place, but it's a place that was already used as a Beis HaKisei. So there is things over there that are not befitting for the Tefillin, so you should remove your Tefillin four Amis away. If you're going to a place out into the field and it wasn't yet used for a Beis HaKisei, so chaylitz, you remove your tefillin right there, v'nif nal alter, and you can use the bathroom right, right where you are. Ukeshu yaitze, and when you're walking away, mar chek dal dames, you should walk away from that place for ames, umanichon, and then you can put on the tefillin. Mipnei shaase beis akise kavua. Now that you've used that place, so it becomes now a place of a beis akise, and you should not put on your tefillin unless you're four ames away. Iboy elohu. The question was asked. May a person enter into that area only for number one, not number two. Is a person allowed, allowed to enter with his tefillin? Some people, by the way, some Rishayim are not good as the word kavua, because kavua would then mean that it's a place that already has uh, tzoya, even number two there, so how could you enter there? So some people take out the word kavua, and it seems from Rashi that way that you take out the word kavua. Ravina Shari, Ravina says that if it's only number one, it's allowed. Rav Adaba Masna Asa. Rav, Mas, Rav Adaba Masna says even if it's only number one, it's forbidden. Also, Shailu Rav, they came, this question was asked to Rav. Omer Luhu and Rav said, Asa, it's forbidden to go into the bathroom for, if, 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 with filling, even if it's just for number one. Chayshinon Shema Yifna Behen, because the person may also need number two as well. And he's with his tefillin on. The Amrila and others say for a different reason, Shama Yafiyach Bahan, because he may pass gas while he's in, uh, doing number one, and therefore he should not wear his tefillin. And that's how we pass him. Tan Yidach, we learned in a different b'raith. Um, and here the Gemara will bring an argument of Beishamai and Beisilo, what a person should do with his tefillin when he has to use the bathroom. Hanichnas le Beisakise Kavua, you're going into a place which is a, this, a set aside for a Beisakise. Chaylitz Tfilov Berachik Dal Damas, remove your Tfilin four Amas away. Umanichon, now where should you place your Tfilin? That's the question. So before we were talking about a person removing his Tfilin. So you probably thought that that means that he removes his Tfilin and he shouldn't take his Tfilin with him. He should put his Tfilin down somewhere. But it's not necessarily what it means. He should remove his Tfilin from his head or from his hands, but where does he put the Tfilin down? We're talking about a person that's going out on the field. What do you do with your tefillin? So let's see what it says here. So you remove your tefillin four amis away. And Beishamai says, Umanichan b'chaloyin asomach l'reshusarabim. So there's a wall that's separating the reshusarabim and this area that people use as a bathroom. And there's a wall, there's an opening that's facing the reshusarabim, but it's not facing the inside. It's sort of a hole that, that you can place the tefillin in facing the reshusarabim. That's where you should put your tefillin. And then v'nichnas, you enter inside to the place which is the bathroom. When he comes out, walk away for Amis, and then you can put back on the tefillin. This is the opinion of Beishamai. Beishil says, you, can, you remove the tefillin, but you hold the tefillin in your hands, and you enter into the place of the Beis HaKisei and do what you have to. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, Place it into a garment, place it, place it into your clothing and enter. So the Gemara interrupts and asks right away, Put the tefillin into your clothing. If it's in your clothing, you might forget that your tefillin is there and you pick up your garment and the tefillin can fall down. Ella, rather, the pshad here is, Cover your tefillin under your clothing, but hold the tefillin in your hands and enter that way. 
Umanichon, and then once you enter into the place of the bathroom, place the tefillin down somewhere. Umanichon b'chayrin hasmuchin l'beis ha'kisei. Put the tefillin in the holes that there are in the walls, but not in the holes that are facing the Rishus Arabim away from the bathroom. Put it in the, in the holes that are facing the, the bathroom, smuchin l'beis ha'kisei, facing the bathroom. That's where you should place the tefillin. V'loya nichem b'chayrin hasmuchin l'rishus Arabim. Do not place the tefillin in the holes that are facing the Rishus Arabim. Shem yit lo'esem o'evedrochem. People, passers-by, may take you tefillin, and he may come to be suspected. Suspected of what? So the Gemara here brings a very interesting story. There was a story with, there was a story with one student, he put his tefillin into a hole that was facing the Rosh Hashanah when he went to use the bathroom. And some Zaina, some woman of Zaina came and took that tefillin out. When at last time she took it, Ubas the base Medrish, she comes into the base Medrish with a tefillin of this student. The Amra and she says, "Reu ma nasanli plaini b'schari." Look what this person gave me as a reward for an immoral relationship that I had with him, right? And it's a terrible thing that happened here. What happened? Kivin sheshama is a Talmud. Kach when this Talmud came to the base Medrish and he heard what people are saying about him, all the Rosh Hagag he went to the rooftop, the nafal in and he fell and died. Some of Farshim say that it says here, V'nafal ames. it doesn't say that he committed suicide, but it says nafal. He was walking, he was trying to, 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 to free his mind of the terrible thing that happened, and Shkacha Pratis had it, and he fell down and died. So, Ba'oyser Shah, after this happened, his skinu, they were mesakin, she hei oichzom, b'yadoi v'nichnas. That if a person has to use the bathroom, he has to remove his tefillin, but he takes the tefillin with him, under a garment, holding it in his hands, and he enters into the bathroom. Now, there's another b'raisa that clarifies this as well. Toner Abbanon, we learned in another b'raisa, Bari Shaina, in the beginning, They would place the tefillin in the holes of the wall that are facing the Beis HaKisei, and what happened? It's a place full of rodents and whatever, and they would come and take the tefillin. His so they were made at Akana that you should place it fill in in the holes in the wall that are facing the Rosh Hashanah. But that also wasn't a good idea because passers-by see fill in there and they can take it. His skinu, so therefore they were masak. And when you go into a bathroom, you hold it fill in in your hands, and you enter into the base Akise that way. Omer Rav Miyashe bereid Rav Yeshua ben Levi. Rav Miyashe said in the name of Rav Yeshua ben Levi, Halacha, the Halacha is... You should wrap the Ritzuas of the Tefillin like a Sefer, that it should be like a Sefer. Hold it in your hands, under a garment we said before, near your heart, so you should remember of the Tefillin that you're holding, and that's how you use the bathroom. When you roll it up, make sure that the Ritzuas are not hanging down even for the length of a Tefach. The Ritzuas, of course, has the holiness of Hashem also. As Rashi says, we make the Kesher of the Dalad, of Shin Dalad Yud, and the Ritzuah of the Tefillin, so therefore make sure that the Ritzuah is not hanging down. Maybe the Abishu gave the ability to make the facilities the way they are today, just for the purpose, so we shouldn't have to do this to the Tefillin. I mean, this is, imagine what they had to what do with the Tefillin and Mulligat Saiten. What if you're in the airport? Huh? If you're a traveler, this is Correct, it's Maiz and Bechal Yoyim. The airport, we'll maybe discuss in a second, it's connected yeah, to the Gemara later. Covers. Good. Correct. We'll see. It's connected. It's connected to the Gemara soon. Let's see. Omer Rav Yaakov, Baracha, Omer Rav Zayre, Loishanu, El Sheyesh, Bi Shohus, Bi Hayayim, Lolafshan. This is all said that the person holds the tefillin if he's still going to put the tefillin back on. As we know, in those times they would wear tefillin all day, and he has time to put the tefillin back on. If a person does not have the time to put the tefillin back on, so you make a bag, you make a holder, but the holder has to have a space of a tefach, okay, so that it should be valid enough, it should be like an oil, it should, it should be a separation between the tefillin and, and the place that you're going. And you, you, you put it in there, you, put, you place the tefillin inside this kiss. During the day, if a person needs the bathroom, now she says, as we said before, roll it up as a safer. But you don't, and you, play, you leave it in your hands, near your heart. But a balayla, huh? what does that mean? Safer means that it should be compact, like a safer. That's all it means. That it should be like, like, yeah, like we roll up the tefillin. 
But if it's balaylo, when a person, okay, possibly, balaylo, by night, when a person is coming to put away his tefillin, how do you put away your tefillin? Sorry, I lost the place over here. Um... So by night, you want to put away your tefillin. So they didn't have necessarily shelves and, 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 and closets the way we have it today. So even if you want to place your tefillin in a corner on the ground somewhere, <coughs> if you have to put it into a kiss, you have to put it away inside a bag uh, that has to be at least larger tefach, and you put it away. Omar Abayis, and Abayis explains this detail that it has to be a kiss, it's like a tefach. And as she explained, Rashi will explain this here. Loishanu, this was only said, Elabekeli Shuhu Kelyon. If this is a Keli that's designed as a holder for the Tfilin itself. If it's designed as a holder for the Tfilin itself, so, so Rashi here says it only almost becomes bottled to the Tfilin. It's like a wrapper of the Tfilin itself, and it's not covered to put it on the ground somewhere. Avabekeli Shane Kelyon, but if you're putting it into a Keli, into a vessel or into a holder that's not designed for the Tfilin itself, then a Philopachas Mitefach, even if it's tighter and if it's less than a Tefach, that, that, that wraps it and that's a Hefzik, and you may put it even on the ground. The Gemara brings a proof for this. Amma Mazutri Tamer Avashi, Teda bring your proof for this regarding Tuma. Shahare, as we know regarding Tuma, that if you're in a tent and there's Tuma there, the Tuma affects everything. <laughs> Besides, if something is enclosed in, inside another Kali, if it's enclosed, then it doesn't affect it. Shahare Pachin Ktanim, even if you have very small jugs and you have things inside of them and there's no Tefach, no space of a Tefach, Matzilim by Olamais. It will, it will protect from the Tumah in an Oyal Ames. So we see regarding Tumah that you don't need a Tefach. So you don't even have Tefach here as long as it's not designated as a holder for this Tefillah. So now the question is, when you get to a person that has a Tefillah that is in, is in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a, the kiss of his Tefillah, and in a suitcase, so bid the if you can't find somebody to, to wash your suitcase in the airport, when you have to go into the bathroom, according to what it says here in the Gemara, you're allowed to take it in. Of course, but it's only with the evidence. It's better to leave your suitcase with someone outside. But if it's impassable, you're allowed. Uh, that's especially what we learned before about a person taking his fill into the bathroom with him and holding it to connect Libo. But Omar Rabbi Baba Chana, Rabbi Baba Chana said, "Ki yava zlinu basreid Rabbi Yechinin." When we would follow Rabbi Yechinin, ki yava boil a male beis akisei. When he wanted to enter into the beis akisei, ki yava nafa nafkit sifra da agarata. He was holding a sefer of agada in his hands. Have a yov long. He would he would give it to one of us to hold. He have a nafkit tefillin when he was holding tefillin. Lo yava yov long. He did not give it to us to hold. He would enter into the bathroom with the tefillin. Omar he said, "Hoil v'sharunu." Rabbanon, since the Rabbanon said it's allowed for a case when a person is alone, Nenatron, I'm going to take the tefillin along with me going out into the field, and the tefillin should be a protection for me. Mazikim, like Rashi says. Omar Rav said the same thing. When we would follow Rav Nachman, he was holding a sefer of God in his hands. He gave it to us to hold. When he was holding the tefillin, he didn't give it to us. Omar he said, Rabbanon allowed it, so it should be a protection for us. Tanu Rabbanon, the Rabbanon learned, and this is Allah now regarding davening. A person should not be holding tefillin in his hands or a sefer in his hands and daven that way. Of course, this is besides the specific times when there's a minute to dafka hold the sefer and daven. There's a specific reason to hold the sefer so, so then you hold the sefer But otherwise, if a person is holding tefillin or a sefer in his hands and he wants to daven shmei nesre, okay, when I, again, when it says shmei nesre, to daven v'yispal mi shmei nesre, so then the person is preoccupied with his reward about the sefer teireh, he's not allowed to hold it in his hands and daven shmei nesre. For lo yashtim ben mayim, while he's holding the sefer teireh or the tefillin, he, he cannot uh, uh, do number one. For lo yishom ben, and with tefillin or the sefer teireh, he should not sleep with them. Lo yishinas kva, for lo yishinas aray. Whether he's sleeping a long sleep or even just temporarily mm-hmm. to doze off, you may not doze off even in the tefillin. As Rashi says, because one may come to pass gas. Oma Shmuel, Shmuel says a similar halacha regarding davening. Sakin, a knife, moist, money, kaida, holding a dish, a china dish, the kikar, a loaf of bread, hare elu, kayetzeben. This has the same halacha. You may not hold any of these in your hands and daven. That's Rashi's pshat because these are items that a person is very concerned and his, his mind is preoccupied when he holds them. 
All the Rishayinim hold that it doesn't only refer to these items. These are all examples. And when a person davens, he shouldn't be holding anything in his hand. The only thing you're allowed to hold in your hand is a siddur, a machzer, but so any no, you shouldn't be holding anything in your hands. Like a baby. Yeah, baby, for sure not. For sure not. You may not be holding a baby in your hands while you're davening Shmai Nasra. What happens if you have a baby that's screaming and not allowing you to daven? Is it better to allow him to scream and to daven Shmai Nasra or to pick him up and hold him in his hands that he should stop crying so he should be able to be machav in your tefillah? I'm not sure. But it says here clearly from this Gemara, the, the, the Psaka Loch is that you may not be holding anything in your hands while you're davening Shmai Nasra, not only these items. Omar Omar Rav Omar Rav Sheshes Rav said in the name of Rav Sheshes. Less hilchase ki ha masnita de beishamai. Now the Gemara goes back to the brayso of beishamai. What did we have before from beishamai? That one may not do number one in tefillin. So the Gemara says the halacha is not like this brayso of beishamai. It's beishamai. Right? It's going right, right over here. It said lo yashten. A person should not do number one when he's wearing tefillin. So he says this brayso is beishamai. Why must it be beishamai? The base hillel. If we're following the opinion of base hillel, hash the base kise kavu ashari. So there's a kalvachaimer here. Now remember this kalvachaimer. Basil before said that a person may enter, even a base kisei kavua, where there's number two there. That's allowed, base a kisei arai mi boye. If a person is just doing number one in a place that's arai, where there's no other tsoya there, for sure a person is allowed to uh, do that in this tefillin. So therefore he says, this must be the opinion of Beishamai. Meisvei, so the Gemara asks on this, it says in continuation, in that b'raise, Dvarim shehitarti l'cha kan, what I've permitted you in one place, asarti l'cha kan. Over here, I'm saying it's forbidden. Now, what exactly is permitted and what exactly is forbidden? What is the continuation of this b'raise saying? <coughs> My love, tefillin, don't you think this refers to tefillin? That there is a case where it's permitted to enter with tefillin? And there's a place where it's, it's, it's uh, forbidden to enter with tefillin. So now the Gemara explains its question. If we're going to say that this b'raise that says that you may not do number one in tefillin, so then it makes sense. Beis Hillel says that you may enter t- with tefillin into a bathroom for number two, but you may not wear your tefillin for number one. So then that would make that 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 the, the braisa that's saying he tarti lochakan and asarti lochakan would make sense. Elo now now you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, what's the pshat on this? We just said a kalvachimer. We just said a kalvachimer that if you may not if you may bring in your tefillin for number two, for sure you should be allowed to bring it in for number one. The Gemara is gonna address that soon. But right now the Gemara is trying to figure out whether this braisa that we said that you may not do number one in tefillin is that Beishamai or Beis Hillel. So the Gemara is saying that it, only if it's Beis Hillel does it make sense Hitarti l'cha and Asarti l'cha. Eli Yomre Beishamai. However, if you're going to say that this braisa that says that you may do number one in tefillin is Beishamai, you may not do number one, sorry, that you may not do number one in tefillin is Beishamai, holy shot of midi. Beishamai holds, you may not do number two in tefillin, you may not do number one in tefillin, there's no difference. So what's the pshat of the continuation of the b'raisa where it says that there's one thing that's permitted and one thing that's forbidden? So the Gemara answer is no. That continuation of the b'raisa was talking about something totally different. Ki tanya hi, that continuation was talking about the halachis of tzniyas in a bathroom. Le'inyan tefachut fachayim. When a person uncovers himself to use the bathroom, how much is he allowed to uncover? The Tani Chad, we learned in one b'raise, Keshu Nifne, when a person is, is using the bathroom, Megale la'achrov tefach, he uncovers from behind one tefach, ulafonov tefachayim, and in the front he could uncover two tefachim. The Tani Idach, and another b'raise, it says, when you have to use the bathroom, la'achrov tefach, you may uncover only a tefach, ulafonov aleiklum, in the front you should not uncover yourself at all. So what, what are these two b'raises talking about? So, my love, would you, don't you think that the pshad here is, idi v'idi b'ish, both of these b'raises are referring to a male, v'loi kashia, and it's not a question, kan l'gdoilim, the b'raise that says that you're only uncovering yourself from behind is for number two, and kan l'gdoilim, when it says you uncover yourself from the front is for number one, and that's what the b'raise before meant, that there's one case that's forbidden, and one case which is permitted. It's talking about a person uncovering himself in the bathroom. So the Gemara does not accept this pshat. 
Does this prop make sense? If the b'raisa that allows the person to uncover himself in the front is for number one, why is he uncovering himself from behind? Ella, therefore the Gemara gives a different shot. Both of these b'raises are talking about a person uncovering himself from number two. And this is not a question. The difference is between a male and a female. For a male it's necessary to uncover himself from the front, and for a female it's not necessary. So, we still have our pshat that we said, that this b'raise that says, hitarti l'cha, and asarti l'cha, is not talking about tefillin, it's talking about the halachas of tesnias. But now, the Gemara brings the next line of that b'raise. Yihachi, now let's see what it says weiter in that b'raise. Ha, diktane Allah, it says further in the b'raise, zehu kalvachayme she'ein alav tshuva. There's a kalvachayme here, that there's no answer to this kalvachayme. Now what kalvachayme is the Gemara talking about? The Kavachayme that we quoted before in the first wide line. If you're allowed to do number two with tefillin in your hands, <clears throat> for sure you should be allowed with number one with holding tefillin in your hands. Right? That's the Kavachayme the Gemara is referring to. So the Gemara explains, My anal of tshuva. What's the pshat that there's no answer? If you're going to say that this section of the Braise is only talking about Hilchas Tznias, the difference between a male and a female, this is just the, the difference between a male and female, what they have to uncover to use the bathroom. So there's no kavachayme that's relevant here. El alav, the only way to explain the continuation of the b'raise, tefillin. The continuation of the b'raise is talking about tefillin. So we come back to the point that we said before, that this must be the opinion of Beis Hillel. Beis Hillel said that you may be holding tefillin in your hands for number two. And you may not be holding the tefillin in your hands for number one. And on that, the b'raise continues and says, this makes no sense. There's a kal v'chaymer. If you may hold it in your hands for number two, for sure you may hold it for number one. And the b'raise goes so far to say that there's no answer to this kal v'chaymer. So that proves our point that that b'raise is the opinion of Beis Hillel. But you to the Rav, this refutes what Rav said, that that b'raise was Beis Shammai. Omar Rav Sheishes to Yufta. It in fact refutes what Rav said. Okay, but now the Gemara comes back to answer this Kav Chaimer. What is the explanation of Basil's opinion? Why could you hold your tefillin for number two and not hold your tefillin for number one? We come up in Kashia. The question still remains. Hashta beisakise kavua shari. If a person is allowed to hold tefillin in his hands for number two, beisakise arai. If a person is is uh, using the bathroom for number one, like Kol Shekain, he for sure should be allowed to hold the tefillin in his hands. So the Gemara answers, no, there's another reason why for number one you shouldn't be holding the tefillin. Hachi ka'amar. This is the pshat. Beis ha'kisei kavua deleke nitzaitzis. A person that's using the bathroom for number two, it doesn't splash over the person's clothing. Shari. It's a, he's allowed to hold the tefillin in his hands. Beis ha'kisei arai deleke nitzaitzis. A person that's using the bathroom for number one where it may splash over him and he may have to wipe himself off with his hands. Osri, there they said you shouldn't be holding the tefillin in your hands. So there's, there is a reason to be more machmer for using the bathroom for number one. Oh, frek te gemori, yochi amai, ain't all of tshuva. So why did we say that this is a kav that has no answer to it? Tshuva ma'al, you see, this is a perfect explanation. So the gemori explains, hochi ka'amar, this is the pshar here. Ha milse, this idea, teisi libetoiris taime, if you want to look at it logically, look at the details of what happens logically, so then, the loy teisi lo bekav ha'chaymer, if you're not going to learn with a kav ha'chaymer, so then you could make sense out of the difference. The e asil lo betoiris kav ha'chaymer, if you're going to look at it as a kav ha'chaymer, and going to compare number one to number two, zel kav ha'chaymer shein all of tshuva. Then, looking at it as a kav ha'chaymer, that has no answer. But if you look at what happens, while a person is using the bathroom, it could be explained why a person should not wear tefillin when he's doing number one, even more than when a person is doing number two. Taner Abanan, another few halachis regarding a person that needs the bathroom. And here the Gemara talks about a person that's going to be eating a meal. Haraitze likanes lesudes kva. A person that's going to begin a meal, he's sitting down with people at a, at a sudes kva, at a meal. So, and a person wants to make sure that he shouldn't have to get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the meal. So the Gemara gives you advice what you should do. Mahalach hasad apomim dalad amas. Walk back and forth four amas ten times. Ay dalad apomim yud amas. Or the opposite, four times ten amas. And that will help your body be able to, be able to use the bathroom. V'yifna and then use the bathroom. V'achkach nichnas. And then you enter into the suda. Omer Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak said, Ha nichnas l'sudas kva. 
A person that enters into a Suda, and like I said before, people then were wearing tefillin all day. So you're going into a Suda, chaylet tefillov, remove your tefillin, v'achakach nechna. So then you enter into the room, into the Suda. This is an argument on what Abchia said. You enter into the room where the Suda is, place the tefillin down on the table. This is the right, this is beautiful for the tefillin. So you should have the tefillin available to put it on as soon as you have to, not to have to walk out of the room. Amos, until sh- when should you leave the tefillin off of your body? Until the time of a bro- when you come to bench, once you're benching, you can put your tefillin back on. But while you're eating, a suda kavua, you should not be wearing tefillin. And this is the halacha, that you're not supposed to wear tefillin while you're eating a suda kavua. Huh? Possibly, l'chayda you are allowed, yes, to make a l'chayim or something like that, l'chayda you are allowed. Tani chade, now we go back to the halacha of the tefillin, about putting a tefillin in a case. And are you allowed to put other things into the case of the tefillin as well? This is very negay la'alacha. Tani chadig, we learned to one b'raise, tseir adam tefillah v'moisa b'afar kasusai. A person may put to get his tefillin together with money in a kind of handkerchief or a head covering that was used as a bag. For the tefillin and other things he could put together. But v'tani yedach, we learned in a different b'raise, loy yotzer. You should not put your tefillin together with money and other things. So kashya, this is a contradiction. So the Gemara answers, Ha the Azmane. Here it's talking about when a person designated it for tefillin. Once it's designated for tefillin, you're not allowed to put other things inside of it. Money, shampoo, or any other things that p- t- people put f- together with the tefillin. Ha the Lai Azmane. Here it's talking about that it wasn't designated for the tefillin, so you could put in that bag other things as well. Domer Rav Chista, Rav Chista said, and here the Gemara is going to bring an argument about this. Hi, Sudra did fill in the Asmane Lemaitza, but fill in. A person that set aside a bag that he uses, is going to be used specifically to store fill in. Sar bait fill in. He actually stored fill in it. Also, Lemaitza bait Pshiti. You may not store money, coins in it. As Bnei Habar, if he designated it for the fill in, but Veloy Tsar he never actually used it for the fill in yet. Or Tsar he used it once for tefillin, but v'loy azmane, he never designated it as such to be a bag for the tefillin. Shari the Meitzer Be'zuzi. You're allowed to use it for coins. So Rav Chista's opinion is, it's only if you had two conditions. It was designated for the tefillin, and you actually use it for the tefillin. Then you may not use it for any, to, to store any other items in it. Well, Abaye the Omar, now according to Abaye's opinion, that he holds in other places in Shas, Hazmone milsihi. Designating something is valid, and we just a designation alone, we go according to the designation. Asmane, if you designated it for tefillin, afagav do tsarbe, even if you never used it for the tefillin yet. Tsarbe, or even if you actually used it for tefillin, e asmane, but only if you also designated it for the tefillin, oser. That's when it's also. You only look at whether it was designated for the tefillin. But Eloi Asmane, if it was not designated for the tefillin, Eloi, you may not use it for the tefillin. So this is Allah Lamaisa. If you buy a tefillin bag, it's being designated for tefillin. Unless the person makes a buffet to shitnai, this is not a tefillin bag, it's being used for all other items that I want to throw into my tefillin bag, then you're allowed. But otherwise, but a tefillin bag is made for bag. the tefillin as well, only for the tefillin. But if, like, you don't have the tefillin bag of using a shopping bag once, then it's not a problem. So if you if you're tefillin is the saying out of the out of uh, out of the actual new, uh, the, out of not, the not only the plastic, but the mamish to add some tefillin itself in a shopping in bag. In a shopping if bag. the add some tefillin is in a shopping bag, then yeah, you're allowed to put other money. But it's not a good idea because of what we had before in the Gemara. It said you're gonna put your tefillin into a garment. You may forget. And it's going to be, you can fall down on the ground. We actually had a story in yeshiva a few years ago. A bachar left his tefillin in a shopping bag. And the guy came at night and he saw a shopping bag that was somewhere in a corner. And it looked like a shopping bag and he put it in the garbage. And then the bachar searched the whole garbage and all the tight over there and he didn't find it. So it's not a good idea to store tefillin in a garbage bag. Because of what the Gemara said before. Pamphlets of Taylor are allowed. We're talking over here about shiti, mois, and the other, other personal items. Huh? Designate money if it's stuck in. They put it into the tefillin bag. It's stuck inside the tefillin, right? So if you designate it, it's allowed. Plastic bag. That's a very 